Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And today I'm bringing you a pre-recorded online paper crafting class where I walk you through the steps of making this tackle box card. I'm using products from the Let's Go Fishing Suite found on pages 78 and 79 of the 23 through 24 annual catalog. I wasn't able to be live with you today, but I still wanted to share a creative project using amazing Stampin' Up! paper crafting products. Mine is a Father's Day card, but you have other options for sentiments in this Gone Fishing stamp set, and you can always add sentiments from another stamp set if you want to change it up and make it something different. You also have options for colors, so if you're giving your card to your dad or your husband or um, you know somebody special, um, you can change up the colors to match their tackle box. So I used shaded spruce and gray granite for my first card here. You could also use real red and smoky slate. The one that I'm gonna demonstrate for you is going to be with crumb cake and early espresso. Um, I just wanted to have something a little bit different than what I, what I have here. So you can see two different versions of a finished card. You can also personalize the tackle, the color of the tackle that's in the box. I've used Smoky Slate for um, my silverish color on all of my basic white uh, lures in here. Um, so, but you can change it to a different color, obviously. Poppy Parade is this red here. I've used Calypso Coral for that little spoon. I've used the Fresh Freesia for this one. Um, Parakeet Party is this green. And then I use Wild Wheat for this one that has more of a goldish tone to it. As far as card stocks, I use Basic White for all of those stamped and die cut pieces. And then I've got uh, Basic Black and some Silver Foil for some of my other pieces like my hooks and sinkers and this little piece there. Um, I've used the Memento Tuxedo Black for my sentiment pieces right here and here. I'm going to um, opt out of using the Wild Wheat and the Calypso Coral this time. I'm going to bring in a couple other colors just to change it up, just to show you that you have options. I'll be using Coastal Cabana and Daffodil Delight for some of those colors. And then obviously, because I'm using the crumb cake for the inside the tackle box paper, I'll be using crumb cake for these little etched marks here to just kind of show roughness. You can barely see them, but they're there underneath. Let's start by die cutting the layers of our tackle box with this divider piece here. We're going to grab that and we're going to die cut the full divider um, die twice onto some crumb cake scrap. When you bring <clears throat> when you bring a die into a machine that has a flat edge, it's good to angle it. So I'm just going to kind of shift it a little bit there. It'll make it much easier to feed into your machine. Now save all of these inside pieces here because we're going to use a couple of them for the handle on the front part of the card. So this is what you get and you've got some embossed sections here. We're actually going to be trimming off these little tabs and in fact this whole last uh, edge here is going to be cut off as well but let's not worry about that till later. Let's go ahead and die cut that again. So you might be asking, why are we doing two of each? And it's because we're going to create some dimension. We're going to layer these up. And it's just going to make um, the, the tray that the lures sit in a, look a, like they're a little bit deeper. Then, what, which ones do we use for the handle? I'm going to suggest the um, pieces that are up in this section of your die because they're at the same height. And this is a nice long handle, but you can choose what you want. So you want one of those and you want two of these. The rest of them you can use for another project. We need to do some more die cutting, but before we do that, we're gonna to need to stamp first. So let's grab our Smoky Slate ink, which is a nice light gray, a cool gray that looks similar to silver. And we're gonna stamp our fly and our fun little fishy looking lure. And then we'll stamp our spoon a couple times. So we'll do two of those. 
And you want to have these spaced out far enough so that you can die cut them. And then we'll do a bobber. Two-step stamp sets are super fun. It's fun to fit an image inside of another one and make it a fuller image. So we're going to be using the Poppy Parade for the bobber. And because our stamps are clear, you can see right down into them as you add it to your other image. I use Daffodil Delight on the um, the spoon and then Parakeet Party on the fly. And then I did a quick cleanup and I used Fresh Freesia on the other spoon and Coastal Cabana on the fish lure. I also found that my bobber did not line up well because I'm stamping at an angle when I'm doing videos. So I'm going to redo that one again. So now all our tackle has been cut, it's time to create this base for this tray and this base for this tray. We've also got some mechanism pieces that are going to allow us to have our card pop up. So we need to create those and we need to work on um, our card base. So we're going to grab our trimmer and we're going to fold, we're going to actually, sorry, not we're going to fold yet. We're going to cut at five and a half inches. And then we're going to score at four and a quarter. And this is what I did for the shaded spruce green one. But I'm going to give you some options here again. So this is just a regular um, medium sized card base, right? If you want to, you can give your uh, card base a rounded look to it by using a punch that has a rounded section. So I'm just bringing in our cloud punch and I'm going to insert one of the corners in here. I'm just going to shove it in there as far as I can. And then I'm going to punch. And it rounds out that corner. See that? Um, Stampin' Up! doesn't currently sell uh, corner rounder punches, but you can do the same effect by just using a punch that has a rounded corner on it. And then if you need to, you can come in and just use your trimmer to try to even things up. But mine looks pretty good. So, and I'm choosing this side for my top because on the bottom side, I can see both layers of cardstock. You want to have that um, on the bottom. Now, another option when you're doing your card is you could use the die that comes in the kit. The problem is, is it cuts all the way around. So if you were to do this and fold your cardstock and cut, you would get a card base that is slightly smaller, first of all, on the sides, and you would risk cutting this area. To not risk it, you'd want to shove the cutting blade, um, the cutting edge of that die off, and that does shrink up your card a bit. So just keep that in mind. And now we're going to cut our piece that is three and a half inches by four and seven eighths. This will be the bottom of our lowest tray and we need another one that is one and a half by four and seven eighths. Our mechanism pieces will come from our crumb cake scraps. And we'll need, um, and actually, I'm sorry, crumb cake and early espresso scraps. For the crumb cake ones, we want pieces that are two and a half, let's just go like this, two and a half inches time. So let's combine them together and cut a one inch wide piece and then we'll slice it in half. So our pieces are going to be scored at a half of an inch, one and a quarter, and I'm using the measurements on this side right now, one and a quarter, and then I'm going to flip it around, so we did again, a half inch, one and a quarter, and now we're going to do one and three quarters, and then we've got our two and a half inch length all over, or all together. So there you can see what we've made. We're going to slice that into two pieces, so we're just going to 
lay it right down like this so we see a half inch on this side and a half inch on that side for these line measurements. We'll take our arm of our trimmer and hold it nice and firm and slice. And now we have those two pieces. Okay, for our early espresso we need pieces that are five inches long and one inch wide each so we're going to cut a two inch wide piece that will slice in half. So two inch by five and those two pieces, again, we're going to cut down the middle, but for now we're going to score them together. Those two pieces are going to get scored at a half of an inch. And by the way, I score on this side initially because it's easier to hold on on this side. A half of an inch, and then we go to two and a half inches, <clears throat> which doesn't show on this side, so we have to flip it around and move it to two and a half inches. So um, a half inch, two and a half inches, and then three. And then, of course, our last one is at five inches. And so now we've got that shape. And we're going to cut that down the middle. Again, it was uh, two inches wide, so we want to cut. So we have a uh, one inch on each side. The arm of our trimmer is holding it nice and firm. And we use our cutting blade to slice. And now we've got those pieces. Let's start assembling. If you recall at the beginning, we were going to cut off an edge. And it's going to be this one over here. So when we lay our piece, our base piece here for our tray, we can avoid putting any connection here with glue because that's going to be trimmed off anyways. In fact, we want to use that as a guide to just go right up to it when we're gluing. You also want to keep your shape, your base shape, inside the rounded corners. There's a couple of them here. So that means we want to glue on the inner edge of the outline. And again, this section will be cut off, so it's okay that it doesn't go right up there. Okay, now let's do this one. We'll let that one dry for a little minute. Same thing, flip it over. But this time we are going to include this back edge. The next step is to add this layer on top. And you can see it creates more of a shadow that way. Let's do the same thing with the second one. Okay, now it's time to trim off the excess. So you can just take your paper snips. And I would like to, I, I, I like to start in the middle here so I can make sure everything's lined up and I'm using the edge of the paper against the edge of my scissor blade. And then for the one that's over here, I flip it over and again use the edge of my blade against the edge of the paper and I get a straighter cut that way. We're not going to use these little tabs here but you could certainly keep them if you want to but the same thing just line everything up and slice straight across. And on this one you can see we're just going to cut right along where the paper edge is. And there we have our two levels of our tackle box. Let's add them inside the card. So for this step, again, determine what the top and the bottom is of your card. We're going to add some multi-purpose liquid glue onto one of the long edges. And we're going to insert that in here about an inch away from the sides and just before the score line here can see that it's all lined up and now we're going to fold this shut and we're going to press down. We're, we're get, ensuring that we can fold our card shut and we're also putting some pressure on there. So then we want to put some adhesive here and that piece is going to get tucked against the back side here. These two sections are not going to get any adhesive, at least not yet. Um, so in order to do that, it's going to help if we flatten the whole thing down coming forward like so, and then we just put a little bit of adhesive there. But let's do the other side first. That way we can do them both at the same time. Try to make sure too that your pieces are parallel. They're going in a parallel direction. Okay, so here are 
the score lines on all those pieces. We're going to flatten and flatten. And then we're going to put a little bit of glue here and just go right up to the score line of your mechanism piece right up there. Flatten it down and press and hold for a few seconds. And then you can open it up and test it, but don't, don't pull too hard yet because it's still drying. Now let's add some stamp images into our trays. So we're gonna take our Tuxedo Black ink and we're gonna use the Happy Father's Day image. Again, photopolymer, it's great because we can see right through it. The problem is Rachel's stamping at an angle, so hopefully she'll get this one straight. <laughs> And then we've also got this image here that I'm going to add to the uh, tray sections um, just to make it look as if they're, I don't know, just have some texture to them. The idea to do that was inspired by a, a sample in the catalog, and I thought that was pretty fun. We have one other image to stamp, and that's the words, my dad, and we're going to stamp that onto the handle, the longest section right here. So we'll open up our tuxedo black again, and this time we're going to grab some tape, and we're going to mask an area of the stamp that we do not want to have inked up. So we're covering it up initially, inking up our stamp, taking the tape off, and you can see we don't have any ink now on those words. And that's going to get stamped onto the center of this handle. So now we can add this tray inside of our card. We've got a place to put it. So we're going to add our glue to this upper level of the mechanism. And we're going to insert and make sure that it looks even on both sides. And then we're going to push it to the back as far as we can and press this down and hold. And then when we lift up, you can see, and I'm just being careful not to peel it away here, you can see that it is attached to uh, the top sections of those mechanisms there. Okay. And don't worry about this not being pretty right here. It looks cut off because it's going to disappear when we put this next tray in here. And the next one's going to be built with these. So the same idea where we're going to take the long one and we're going to add that first. But I want, I want to layer my mechanism pieces so that they are not in the same space. So we're going to put one on this side. See, and then we're not layering cardstock too much. And then the other one, and again, long side glued first. The other one right here. And we just want them right on top of that tray. They're not going to be seen. Fold it flat and press. Put some pressure on there. Lift it up. And we're going to add glue here and here. And they're going to attach to the top section of the card, so just press and hold. Remember not to put too much on because you don't want it oozing out and sticking where it shouldn't stick. And then this tray can sit right on top of those. The key is to be able to shut the card all the way, not necessarily to open it all the way. So don't worry if your card does not open all the way. That's not important in a pop-up card. You can see as we open it up that those levels are sitting on the mechanisms. So cool! Okay, I'm just going to press and hold that one more time. So by by moving these smaller mechanisms to the middle, we have avoided creating layers that are super thick because our card is already going to be really thick on the inside with the, the lures and all the tackle that we put into the box. We can go ahead and add this. I'm going to use my ruler though to mark where the middle is. It's going to help guide me. So halfway between five and a half and zero is two and three quarters. And then I can put glue on the back side of this one. 
and just bring it right up to that little mark. Make sure it looks pretty even up and down. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and this piece will just get added with dimensionals. So we'll grab a couple of those, one on each side. And we'll center our handle over the top. This is why you want to have them in line with each other. And then we're going to add some embellishments. I'm using um, some brushed metallic adhesive back dots. And you can use whatever colors you want. I'm thinking for this one, it might be kind of fun to add some copper. I don't know. Why not, right? Let's do copper. We have choices. Let's add our lures. I had so much fun making these cards. Remember to keep your, your fingers from getting sticky. Clean them off once in a while. Rachel got sticky towards the end there. Did you notice? <laughs> I rearranged my tackle, my bait, my lures or whatever, a little bit differently inside each tackle box. You can do that. You can, like I said in the beginning, you can change the colors out. You can personalize this card to make it work for whichever Fisher person you are making your card for. Your dad, your grandpa, your uncle, your brother, your sister, your mom, your grandma, whoever it is that likes to fish in your family, you can create a fun card for them this way. I hope that you enjoyed what I shared today. Remember to refer to the description of my video for a list of supplies that I've used. You can also look for the link for my blog post in that description so that you can go there and see close-up photos of these cards, see the measurements written out, and see and shop from a visual supply list. Please join me next week at 11 a.m. Central Time for my next paper crafting class. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel as well. Thanks for the thumbs up and thanks for sharing. In the meantime, have a great week. And now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.